What's up guys, my name is Tony, and today I'm going to give you a quick and painless walkthrough of my developer workflow for 2029. This is going to be a showcase of how I use my computer not only for software development, but for general productivity as well. Let's jump right into it. So the elephant in the room is that I use Linux, by the way, as my operating system. It's just more friendly to free and open source software principles, and it's really, really convenient and frictionless for someone like me who wants to jump straight into what I'm working on without suffering through a battle of corporate bloat that comes with Windows and Mac OS. I don't really want to be fighting my computer, I actually want my computer to be my companion in my journey to optimality and efficiency. As far as what distribution of Linux I use, I generally use Gen 2, NixOS, and Arch Linux, but for today's showcase, it'll be on Arch Linux because I personally think that it's the fastest and easiest distribution to get things up and running. However, long term, I do believe that NixOS is the end game and final boss of Linux, so I'll probably be migrating everything over to NixOS in the future. So most of my years using a computer in my younger days was through the lens of Windows or a desktop environment like GNOME. It involved a lot of clicking and dragging and a lot of alt-tabbing furiously until I cycled to whatever program I wanted to use. So for example, if I wanted to edit my website, I'd have to have it open here in its tab. Maybe I'd press Alt-Tab to open VS Codium, and I'd say, hey, let me change the word creating to compiling, and save that, and I'd have to have the server up, and I'd probably click it or Alt-Tab into it, and then I'd click over here and say, did, I, did it work? Okay, it worked, right? So that's a lot of friction for me. You know, I could Alt-Tab and do this, that, and the other, and maybe I could snap stuff to, to you know, the side and snap this over but you get my point you can't really see much i don't know exactly if i can get to where i want to get to immediately so for me using the computer is about getting to where i want to go and getting there fast okay so this is obviously something that became problematic for me fairly quickly into my journey of computing i discovered a better solution to this problem later in life and that is a dynamic window manager with a window manager i can just hit one button and go to a specific program that i want every single time i don't even need to think about it so if i want to go to firefox i just hit super three if i want to go to my brave browser i'll hit super two if i want to go to a terminal i'll just hit super one go back to firefox super three back to the terminal super one so i never have to cycle through any windows or anything like that i can just go directly to where i want to go so for my personal setup i always have a terminal on one I have my work browser on two. My personal browser is on three. That's where I watch YouTube and stuff. Four is my Slack. This is proprietary garbage software, but I'm forced to use it for work. So I need a quick bind for it. Five is usually my database managing tool. I use dBeaver for that. We'll get into that a little bit later. And if I need to use anything else, I just open six and launch Rofi and just type the program manually. So if I wanted to open up my volume control, I could just type volume control and then immediately open it up and that's it. So let's go ahead and get into some of the scripts I use. So I spend a lot of time in the terminal here and I use a program called Tmux, which is a terminal multiplexer. Kind of allows you to store sessions and just jump to and from existing projects that you're working on in, inside of a terminal and offers a pretty good workflow for that. So I have a D menu script that is binded to super FF which just opens a list of all my projects. I can search this list with fuzzy finding or I can navigate it with Vim keybinds to get to one of these projects. And this is huge. So let's say, for example, I want to go to my website project. I'll just go to tonybytheway.com in this project list and just hit enter. And it will immediately launch a Tmux session at this repo. This is very similar to the Primogen's Tmux sessionizer, but instead of it having to be run from the terminal, you can run it from anywhere globally. So I like that a lot. So anyway, like I said, if I hit enter on that list, it will either launch a Tmux session at that repository, or it will attach to an existing session if one already exists. So if I go down to show notes, that Tmux session already existed, so it just went straight to that Tmux session, and I didn't lose where I left off. It looks like last time I was in this Tmux session, I already had Vim opened at NetRW here, so. This is really big for me because I'm constantly working on various projects, and if I need to put a pin in something, I can leave it open in a Tmux session and just come back to it later. So an example of what this looks like in daily life for me is, let's say I'm working on something for a client, and I've got a wedding website that I've generalized for some clients, so I'll jump into that here. And it looks like I still have the server running on Tmux. So this is actually a perfect showcase. I just attached to this Tmux session and I'm right where I left off. So it looks like the server is still running on localhost 3000. And I've got the server on pane one and I've got the NeoVim open on pane two. So if we go to the browser with super two, like I said, we could just go to localhost 3000 and there you go, there's the website. So let's say I wanna change the verbiage of this. Let's say the client says, hey, I wanna change the verbiage of the RSVP form. I just go back to super one to my terminal and I'll just type space FG to grep that string 
I'll paste it in and there it is. I can get right to that file. So I can just change this to something like subscribe to my YouTube channel. Obviously the client doesn't want to see that, but I do and I want you guys to. So super two, right back to that website and there you go. The change is already live. So it's really easy to jump to and from. I can see the website here, super one, go back to the NeoVim, go back to the server. It looks like everything compiles correctly. And that's just me inside of this repo. So if I want to put a pin in this, I can literally just hit super FF again. And let's say I want to jump over to another website I'm working on. I can go to cc.eats. This is a cooking website I'm working on for another client. I can open up a new pane in this session. I can run Hugo serve and that'll start building the site. And it's on localhost 1313. So I'll go back to browser with super two, open up a new tab, localhost 1313. And there you go. I'm right into that recipe website and I can see what I'm working on here. So let's say the client changes something up on me and says, hey, it's actually not 300 grams of boneless chicken. It's only 200 grams. So what I'll do is I'll copy that, go back to my terminal. I've got Envim open in this already, so I could just do a grep on that string. Looks like the content is in this file, so I can just change this to 200 grams. Save that, and I didn't even have to refresh. It's already updated because of the server. But yeah, this is an example of something where I'm jumping between projects, and I don't want to have the mental overhead of alt tabbing or doing this, that, and the other. This system has worked for me for so long, so it's a lot more efficient and optimal for me. So dmenu is a very powerful tool and obviously from that script you can see the potential with it. I do have another dmenu script that just opens a text file with all my bookmarks in them separated by work and personal. So if I run this script it's going to be super fb. It launches the same menu but this time it has a list of bookmarked websites split up by work and personal. So for example if I want to go to a Tokyo Night theme website that I have bookmarked I can just start typing Tokyo. I can hit enter and then it's just going to launch that Tokyo Night theme in my personal browser because that's where I've put it in the file. There's a lot of potential with this. I did clean up the bookmarks a little bit for the video. The script intuitively knows which browser to launch, which website based on if it's personal or work. So let's say I want to open up something for work. I can just run that script again with super FB for find bookmarks. And let's say I wanted to open up the Rust manual. That would be work related for me. So that's going to open up in my Brave browser. So I'll type Rust and hit enter and boom, it automatically opens the Rust manual in a new tab in my work browser. I like to keep my browser separate for focus reasons, but also in case I ever need to share my screen with coworkers. I know to never share my personal browser and all my work stuff has been contained and isolated to just this browser. But I would say mainly it's for the focus aspect of it. And I think the reason that this script is a lot more convenient than using the browser bookmark tool for me, number one is I don't have to use the mouse at all for it. But number two is that I can just keep a running list of bookmarks and I can take this list wherever I want. And it's literally just a text file. And as long as I have a bookmark in this list, I don't need to worry about where I am on my computer. I can literally be anywhere on my computer and just hit super FB. And no matter where I am, I can just start typing something, hit enter. And then I know that that's gonna open a tab in whatever relevant browser it was. So if you're interested in that script, I can drop a link to it below the subscribe button. One last dmenu script worth mentioning here is that I have a script that opens a list of sessions for tmux. And it's going to be super fo. And if I have a tmux session, it's going to be listed in this list. So if I don't have a tmux session open for whatever it is that I need, and it's not a repository of mine, I can just create a new one here. And let's say I want to make a new project and I'll call it arch install script. I've now created a new tmux session that's going to show up in that list and I can start immediately working on an arch install script for example. So I can hop back to that cc.eats and then reopen this script and you guys can see the arch install script is now showing up in my list of tmux sessions. So for NeoVim, I have a pretty dialed workflow, I'd say, and I made a video on it already, so you could take a look at that. But I do use it a lot for work and projects. And there's a lot of stuff I do in NeoVim for my personal workflow that makes it a little bit more granular. So if I'm in NeoVim and I want to be able to move around fast, I usually utilize stuff like Control-O and Control-I to jump back and forth from where I was. And I use LSPs to go to references and go to definitions of certain things. And I can hover over functions to see what the parameters require and what they return. As far as file movements, I definitely use Telescope a lot, made by TJ. It's an incredible plugin for NeoVim. So if I wanna to go to a file, I can just open Telescope and just type link, and I can go straight to my link TypeScript file. And if I wanna jump back to where I was, just hit Control-O. 
Now, this next segment is gonna be programming specific, but I do use the quick fix list a lot. So one thing I like to do in NeoVim is grip for a specific string and telescope and add it to a quick fix list or go to a reference of a function and add that to a quick fix list. I can move around the quick fix list with certain keybinds. So an example of this would be if I have a function here called get main and secondary guests, and I want to add a parameter to it. Let's say I want to add a middle name to it. I can add that here. Now I have a predicament where I don't know where this function is called, and I just added a parameter to it, which could break my application. So what I would do is utilize the quick fix list and my LSP here. I would just hit GR on this function, and I see that it's referenced three times. So I can see the first time it's referenced is where I just changed it. That's where it's defined. I can hit control J to go to the next place that it's referenced. And there you go. My LSP is already telling me that it expects three arguments, but only got two. So we could just fix this right now by adding middle name here and then add it to this and then we're good to go. So then I can move to the next item in the quick fix list. And it looks like it's just importing this function here. So nothing needs to be changed there. I can quickly open the list or close it with a keybind and what have you. So one more thing I'll talk about is my dbeaver workflow. And since I already have this wedding website open, we'll just use that to show you a quick example. I'll just change something on the front end from the site and we'll see the updated change on the back end with dbeaver. So I'll go to Alice Smith's RSVP form and I'll change her from going to not going and hit submit. And then we'll go over to dbeaver, one key, super five. If we see now, before I refresh, she is going, but if I hit control enter and refresh, we do see that Alice Smith has gone from going to not going. So that was a big 30,000 foot view on how I use my computer for efficiency and whatnot. I didn't touch at all on video production and other stuff. I'll include my dot files in my configs below the subscribe button. And if you want to see more videos like this or anything Linux related or free and open source software related, just drop a comment and I'll put it in the pipeline. And as always, I wouldn't be able to end the video without an obligatory NeoFetch.